Good morning, brethren. Good morning. As one of our own poets has said, I don't know about you, but I come here to get stuffed. <laughs> the main text is Ephesians 5.13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. <clears throat> uh, first, I want to make some comments and observations about just the general theme of our preaching festival this weekend, which is illumination and its redemptive function. Redemption has, is comprised of uh, two parts. The first part, and this is from God's point of view, is that redemption is a purchase. God bought something, namely he bought all of us. He, he bought the human race. Christ purchased us with his blood. Note, you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. The scriptures make this, make this very plain, that we were purchased. And that, that's the first part of redemption, is being, being purchased. <clears throat> We can see this in some other text, Hebrews 9.15. For this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. So a redemption here is a payment that was made, redemption of the transgressions. It was, it was a, the, the debt caused by our transgression was paid in the blood of Jesus Christ by his death. And another one, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And another one, Revelation 5, 9. They sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So this is the first part of redemption is that sins were paid for and we were bought, purchased by the blood of Christ for God. So God, God owns what he's redeemed. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, the second part of redemption, and this is from our point of view, has to do with being set free, has to, be, has to do with being freed from slavery. <clears throat> All sinners are slaves to the carnal nature, to their own carnal nature, and to the devil. That's the way it is. That's why we needed to be redeemed, needed to be bought. <clears throat> Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But, now, this is from Romans chapter 6, we know that formerly we were the servants of sin, we were the slaves of the devil who worked through our carnal nature, we were, we were helpless in this situation. We could not help ourselves. We needed to be delivered from some outside source. We need to be redeemed from this kind of servitude. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. <clears throat> now this is... This is our, from our point of view, this is redemption. It has to do with freeing us from slavery. So when Christ redeemed us, he made us free. That, that's the second part. So it's a payment and it's a purchase. Here's another good word, though. It's also a ransom, <clears throat> a payment in order to set captives free. From God's point of view, we were purchased for him in redemption. And from our point of view, we were set free from slavery to Satan in order to serve God by being redeemed. So now with that in mind, the role that illumination plays in redemption is in freeing us. <clears throat> Jesus made the transaction 
but there has to be knowledge of that transaction brought to you. You've got to know about it for it to do you any good. <clears throat> so the illumination that we're speaking of in this preaching festival is not a one-time thing, although there is a, a point where this began, but this is an ongoing, a continual revelation and illumination of what of what Christ has already done and what God continues to do through Christ. We're continually illuminated. <clears throat> and uh, yesterday when the, some of the other brethren were preaching, this, this verse of this song kept going through my mind. This illustrates very well what we're talking about here. Long my imprisoned spirit lay in... Uh, <clears throat> fast bound in sin and nature's night. Now, that was our condition. Amen. Now, what the songwriter didn't include here was that we didn't even know we were in this condition. He lay, not, not we were working, my, my imprisoned spirit lay in a dungeon, in prison, in darkness, in chains, thinking that we were something else and somewhere else. Thine eye... The Lord, thine eye diffused a quickening ray. It was Brother Jeremy's sermon yesterday. I awoke. The dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. All that because of the quickening ray. Because the light, the illumination that shone in the dungeon. So this is this a perfect picture of redemption. The, the enslaved person was bought and purchased. He was illuminated and he was freed and he went forth and followed Christ. All because of this light that shined. Amen. So this is, this is the role of illumination and redemption. This is the purpose that it serves to us. <clears throat> exactly what is illumination? Well, simply it, it means to see. But to see what? And this, is, this goes back to what Brother Given uh, mentioned on Wednesday evening. Particularly to see what God is doing. Amen. It does us no good to just kind of see the world around us mm -hmm. and see ourselves if, it, if we can't relate it to what God is doing. Because ultimately, all things are going to be brought together in one to God. Amen. Ultimately, there's going to be a grand consummation at the judgment day before God, who is the judge of all. So when we think of illumination, it's, it's in light of that. It has to be the knowledge of what God is doing has to be brought to you. <clears throat> That's true illumination, to see what God is doing. <clears throat> you have no need that any man teach you as part of the new covenant. And it's obvious that you are a son because this kind of knowledge of what God is doing is not given to just servants. Do you know why God lets his children know what he is doing? It's because they are his heirs. Amen. We, we started off as children, but the time's coming where he's, he's going to hand it all over to his heirs. So the, the illumination that we receive now is necessary because we're, we're in training for our inheritance. <clears throat> we need the light now. <clears throat> now, the, our main text in Ephesians 5.13 the, the Spirit here affirms that there is only one thing that can make manifest what is in the dark, and that is light. <clears throat> in this, uh, in the context here of Ephesians chapter 5, <clears throat> and now you know that this is an open discussion. You can jump in and share your ob observations whenever you want to. <clears throat> but in the context here, uh, we know... Brother Given's just getting started in the book of Ephesians, but you know there's great things that the Apostle Paul's opening up to the Ephesians here, things that he didn't tell everyone else about God's purpose, how he is revealing his wisdom through the church and how that the church is the body of Christ and members of, of his body. And these great things are being opened up. We're now in this fifth chapter, uh, is, this is the exhortation part of his epistle. In view of these things, in view of all that these marvelous things that, that God has opened up concerning his purpose, here's, here's the exhortation to you in chapter 5. First he starts off, be therefore followers of God as dear children. 
And he goes on to say, walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And he exhorts us in the following verses to avoid sin and sinners. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 7, be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So this is all spoken against the backdrop of, of God's purpose, of you being involved in that purpose. <clears throat> I wanted to read Ephesians 5.13 from a couple of other Bible versions, which are also good. I found actually they were, there were several that were not good. But uh, Darby's version says, But all things have, having their true character exposed by the light are made manifest. For that which makes everything manifest is light. And the International Standard Version says, But everything that is exposed to the light becomes visible. <clears throat> there are, um, I have to confess here at the start, some of my thoughts are kind of disjointed, I think. I don't, this doesn't all fit together as, as well as I would like it to. So it might sound like I'm jumping around a little bit. <clears throat> but there are some, there are three important words in this text here I want to look at. Reprove and manifest <clears throat> and whatsoever. Sister Michelle spoke about these or at least a couple of these words, reprove. All things are reproved. All things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. This is to blame. This is what reproof or reprove means, to blame, to censure, to charge with a fault to the face, to chide, to reprehend, to blame for, to convince of a fault or to make it manifest, to refute, to disprove, to excite a sense of guilt, to manifest silent disapprobation or blame. And now this is from Webster's Dictionary, which sometimes is a pretty good commentary on Scripture. <clears throat> he includes this sentence to, to illustrate this word reprove. The vicious cannot bear the presence of the good whose very looks reprove them and whose life is a severe, though silent, admonition. Now, that's from one point of view. Now, we know we're not always silent. But even because of this light, ye are light, and light makes manifest just, and you know this from experience, just your presence around darkness will reprove the darkness. I, I countless times, especially in the workplace, I've experienced this, where when someone... Uh, notices that I'm in a room and they, they use foul language, they'll see me and they'll apologize. Or I've uh, noticed also in, in long term, these kind of things will kind of die down. Just because you're there on a daily basis, it just kind of, it just gradually, it, especially where I'm working now, I've noticed that, that I, I don't hear any foul language where, where I work at right now. Brother Ricky. Things that you do not run with them yeah. in the same flood of dissipation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just what you don't give yourself to. That'll be a source of conviction to others who do give themselves to it. That's yeah. right. And that, that's the light is making manifest, reproving. Mm -hmm. And light disperses darkness. And mm -hmm. we experienced mm -hmm. this when we were when we started there, there was a lot of like darkness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh as we were there more, the darkness kind of left because they didn't want to be there. Yeah. So uh, uh, darkness doesn't stay where light is at. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's almost always when something like that happens. I've noticed it's always, almost always, to people that I have at some time in the past said something. Mm -hmm. It's it's um the the it isn't that they see me walking down the street and they say we got to be careful around yeah. that person. <laughs> it's, it's because you've set, you've expressed your faith yeah. and it is that light has gone mm -hmm. out yeah. and they see they can't get it out of their mind. Yeah. I mean they can try but it's there. I mean mm -hmm. it's like a it's like a seed that was planted and yeah. and so I mean later 
Yeah, but you can see the residual effects of it just in the fact that they change their manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't receive it, they do. It does have a work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. That's why, uh, like Brother <clears throat> Bob said about our light shining, that's why when you're around darkness, mm -hmm. you want to make sure your light shines. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, then you're suppressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll kind of like suppress the yeah. light. That's a good point. If you, if it can have the opposite work too. If you're, if if you let it, darkness will suppress your light. Yeah. <clears throat> if you let it, brother Jeremy. Yeah, I noticed this. Uh, what, what brother Bob said <clears throat> is when I first started working where I'm at now. This one guy, he's not a godly person by any stretch of imagination. So he was talking all morning, talking, talking, talking. He said, "So what? Why? Are you, why did you come here anyway?" I said, "For ministry," and he said. I feel bad about some of the things I've said this morning. <laughs> and he changed what yeah. he talked about for the rest of the day. But like Brother Bob said, it wasn't until I said something, mm -hmm. I started talking to him. And that's, this has happened to me over and over again. Yeah. That it wasn't until I said something <clears throat> that people changed for good or bad. Some people just stopped talking yeah. to me altogether. Yeah. Well, I have nothing mm -hmm. to do with me. Yeah. Which is fine with me. But then when they get around each other and they get bold, the darkness yeah. comes together. Yeah. They yeah. start getting bold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then things change again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed that, that when you're with maybe one-on-one, -on -one, people talk different around me. That's right. mm -hmm. But when they get in a group, all of a sudden darkness starts to become yes. bold among, amongst each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother Gaming? Yeah, this exposure of the light, it, it, gets, it gets specific. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not like it in general. I don't know how a person could like look at you and just uh, the way you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's probably ten thousand people live <coughs> externally, just just like you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do you take them? Let me give an example. Now, the scriptures speak against fornication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I'm shining the light on this. Paul said that you're you're not your own. Mm -hmm. You're bought with a price. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. by God in your body. He that commits part of the age of sins against his own body. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he shows the details of the thing. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and when he does, what, mm -hmm. that's what convicts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you trace Christ's ministry through that. You know, mm -hmm. so you devour widows' houses. See, he, he shined light and he showed the particulars yeah, that right. were hidden. <coughs> They're actually, their outward conduct hid mm -hmm. these things they were doing behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But the light brought it up. Mm -hmm. That's right. It. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. For what it truly is. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, that's, the, that's the reproof. Mm -hmm. The reproof is that you, it's, it's, not, it's not covered up or glossed over or sometimes we say candy coated. It's, it's shown for what it really is, which is an offense to God. Mm -hmm. Good work for us. This really works for us. We really don't have to do anything if you, if you look at it at, uh, like, like this. All you've got to do is allow the light to work. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes you, uh, there's different degrees of darkness that appears. There's some people who are very, very sensitive. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll even notice that you don't ever use foul language. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. and they'll, they'll, but there's some you just have to really, you just got to call them down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it gets to a point that you yeah. see they're not going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to yeah. say something to them. Uh -huh. And, uh, but, you know, but if you let your light work, yeah, you know, right. if you let your light do the work, it'll do the convicting. Mm -hmm. uh, when yeah. people work very closely with you, they'll, they'll know a lot about you. They'll yeah. know your manner and yeah. things like this. And if they see the light, Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll respond to it. Yeah. Uh, so the light really does the work yeah. for you. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. It does it does a lot of work. Not only, uh, as you were uh, speaking there, I thought not only does it uh, suppress darkness, but sometimes those who are in darkness may find they're looking for some light. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they'll they'll see it in you, and so they'll come to you and, and maybe ask you some questions. Yeah. That That's that's reproving the darkness, too. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy? <clears throat> that, um, and th this has happened to me when I was searching and people had no idea I was searching but it was because of something they said that made me drew me to them it was, I have never yeah. been drawn to somebody because of their actions I've met some people that were really nice people but it was always because of something they said yeah. 
And that's what drew me to them. That's what that's what made brought that's what brought me to to see to start looking at them and going, yeah, they are different. But when they opened their mouth and started talking, and I and I they didn't know what was going on inside of me, but I had a desire to know the truth is because they started saying something that I said, hey, I want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sister June. That was a light making manifest. Mm -hmm. the, that was a very hidden thing, even though yeah. the, the person themselves yeah. mm -hmm. had no clue. Yeah. But was when the light came mm -hmm. in whatever form, that there was a there was a lesser light, if you will, in the conduct, which which gave credence to what was said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, I think everybody has met someone, if not a multitude, that make a profession in their lives have nothing to do with what they say. Well, that causes people to discount what they say. It puts the lie yeah. to uh -huh. what they say. Yeah, that's, right. that's that's where the value, uh, besides the personal value that it is to ourselves to live in the truth, uh, but our consistency before men is is what gives them a cause to to really consider what we're saying mm -hmm. because it has a ring of truth to it. There's yeah. there's a harmony and consistency there mm -hmm. that can be observed. But then whenever they open their mouth, uh, the, the believers, when they open their mouth, see, there's, there, it, it's, a, it's a further light. It's a, it's a more searching, more in, invasive light there. So that Jesus said that, that, that those that are, that here's the condemnation. Mm -hmm. That light has come into the world, and men love darkness. How would they know that? How would they know that they love the darkness? The, because light has come, and they mm -hmm. they drawn back from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. This brother Tony mentioned. This is, this was a good thing to see that the light will penetrate if it's not hindered. Mm -hmm. and convince people of all sorts of things. But mm -hmm. if they don't do that, then it's when a, a word becomes necessary, see? Mm -hmm. When they're, yeah. as you said, there's different levels of darkness. Some people, maybe for a long time, have been thinking about their conduct and their life. Mm -hmm. and, and then you come along in your consistency. One of the things that is a light is your consistency. You're, mm -hmm. you're consistent. Mm -hmm. And you're what you do for the Lord is consistent, and your work is consistent, and it shines a light. And the other times, some people like the Pharisees are just hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he has, to, he has to stay a word and send a shaft of light in there, not for them, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. for the people. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. See, that's yeah. another thing. Yeah, so there's yeah. light will, will convict the individual, but there's more involved in that individual. Mm -hmm. That individual may... Be repel the light, but he's got to be exposed to the people out here yeah. so they so they know what he is. Amen. That's right. And uh, this light uh, makes manifest. It goes along with what Brother Ricky said about God shining the light in our hearts. Even in yourself, you might think you're in the light. Like I thought I was in the light, you know, at one time. Well, the light shined and made manifest <laughs> the things that were not light that were actually yeah. darkness. Mm -hmm. So you can think. That, that everything's okay and, and light will shine and it'll actually yeah. make manifest those things that mm -hmm. are darkness mm -hmm. because Satan transforms himself yeah. into an angel of light. Mm -hmm. So we I have to remember that. Yeah. 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 Throughout this discussion, I was considering these scriptures in Matthew that say, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. This really did mm -hmm. go along with what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. The light, the light shines on everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Judith? The characteristic of light and how it's different from darkness is light can penetrate darkness, but darkness can't penetrate light. Mm -hmm. The light is what makes reveals, is what reveals things that are hidden. And darkness is what hides those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our discussion about this contrast of light and dark, it made me think of what Paul said about fragrance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Second Corinthians yeah. two. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as powerful, but it has its own kind of effect. Yeah. Fragrance of Christ, yeah. of life mm -hmm. to those who believe, 
death. and of death to yeah. those who are perishing. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty powerful, mm -hmm. pretty powerful illustration of this. Yeah. Same concept, same principle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. The same fragrance smells yeah. like different things to different yes. people. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen, brother. Mm -hmm. The true light. <clears throat> Jesus said, "I'm the true light." It's the true light. Melissa's talking about. It's, it's not. This, it's not a deceitful light, but a true light. Now, what really, what really is, is uh, good to see about this. Now, say someone recognizes that you're you, you're consistent, like Brother Gibbons says. And but now, what will separate you from just some other person who lives consistently mm -hmm. good is mm -hmm. that you can speak with understanding. Yeah, now, yeah, when right. you're given the opportunity to yeah, speak, right. okay, your life is, has a consistent matter mm -hmm. about it. But then you can speak with understanding. The light does this. Mm -hmm. Now, someone who just lives a good life and, and these kinds of things, mm -hmm. they can't. They, that's what separates. Yeah. You can say they don't have the true life. Mm -hmm. yeah. True light. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. We'll look at this word manifest. <clears throat> also, it's another very important word in this text. All things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Plain, open, clearly visible to the eye, or obvious to the understanding, apparent, not obscure, or difficult to be seen or understood. <clears throat> From the testimony, the truth we conceive to be manifest. So this is, once light is shed, now it's obvious. Now it's not hidden anymore, it's clearly understood because of the light. <clears throat> Some examples of this. In 1 John 1, 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life, for the life was manifested. And we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and completely unknown to mankind, and was manifested unto you. Another one, Romans 10, 20. Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Mm -hmm. Now how can someone who's not looking find? It's because it was made manifest. Yeah. Amen. Not, we weren't even looking, but it was made manifest. It was, re, it was the obscurity was taken away, the mystery was taken away, and we found. <clears throat> So whether we're talking about unfruitful works of darkness or if we're talking about the revelation of God himself, light makes manifest. <clears throat> Amen. Brother Mike, mm -hmm. reason why men are without excuse when the true light is not shining. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and this, uh, Brother Tony brought up this, um, this, you know, some people, I've worked with some people that, that on the surface, they actually had a greater, a greater moral appearance than some of the Christians I've seen. I mean, it, they, they, and they had, it seemed as though they had genuine care for their fellow man. They actually looked out, they, they put themselves in, in, um, in bad situations so that others could be benefited by it. I mean, it appeared as though they, in fact, the one man I actually asked him, are you a believer? And he didn't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> It's like, yeah. what, do, what do you mean? And I mm -hmm. expect, do you believe that Jesus is God's son? He says, no. He said, why, why would I believe that? He had no idea. He had no clue. What, but see, his whole thing, his whole motivation in life was just to be a good person. Yeah. Yeah. But it just wasn't good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, you know, when, when, he, when he encountered the, the light, when the light shone on that, see, yeah. it could have been he was bringing forth fruits, meat for repentance. That's what I thought. I thought, mm -hmm. maybe this is a guy's a good candidate. Yeah. But he wasn't a good candidate. Because his heart was hard. Yeah. And even though it didn't appear that way, yeah. when the light shone on it, yeah. it revealed, it made manifest yeah. what was really inside right. that person. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, in the, and Sister Michelle mentioned this too. And if we just keep, keep this strictly in the context, what Paul is talking about is making manifest the, the works or the deeds, unfruitful works of darkness. Mm -hmm. But we know the light has more effect than just that. So we're we're free to take this outside the, the strictest context here. But the, the, light, the light manifests what is light, too. <clears throat> it manifests all things. Hey, this is a, a good a place as any to, to discuss this also, that there, in, 
in the spiritual realms, there is a vast difference between light and darkness. In, in this world, uh, we have what we call shades of gray, right? You can, you can see something that is white or light, and you can see it gradually turn to black. We have, we have shade under trees in the daylight. We have shadows. And as the sun starts going down, gradually the light goes away. But see, in the spiritual world, it's not like this at all. There's, a, there's an enormous difference between light and darkness. These two do not mix. And so that's, that's why light has such a, a powerful and strong effect is because, that, because what it is revealing is not like it at all <clears throat> in this yeah. certain uh, context here. Sister June? <clears throat> yes, whenever you talk about light and darkness, <clears throat> in, in a spiritual context, what you're really talking about is good and evil. Yes. Remember, the tree was the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And that's where darkness entered, with the knowledge of evil. That's right. <clears throat> right. It's true that the light makes manifest. That is true. Then you see how wrong it is to try and adapt the truth. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. The person's condition. That's right. Yeah. See? You, when you adapt the light, then you're diminishing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what okay. most polite way of saying it. Uh, so then you've got to let the light do its work. And Brother Tony says, so, and our, your, our lives must support what we say in order for the light to light to shine. Mm -hmm. So I can see this more and more that this idea of seeker friendly adaptation, this sort of thing, this this is fundamentally wrong. Yeah, it's not really light. That's right. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. Sir Nicky? Well, Satan himself is transformed into yeah. an angel mm -hmm. of light. Yes. Right. So sometimes it doesn't appear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might look as light and it's right. really not light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually darkness. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, I was going to bring that text up too because that's an important text that's that's the only place in scripture that i'm aware of where light is associated with the devil the satan does not use light other than in this this text to to deceive and even then sister nikki said it's just an appearance he has the appearance of an angel of light he he can't actually offer any kind of illumination because he doesn't have it it's only a deceptive appearance. That's the only place where Satan uses light. Anywhere you look in the scriptures, anywhere else light is used, it's, it's of God and it's for good. Yeah. <clears throat> Strani? Only those in the light can see that it's a deceptive appearance. That's right. Mm -hmm. Tony? I like this point of Brother Gimbra. Right now you have compromise. Actually, you have a different shade of light. That's right. I mean, begin. it's a yeah, navy yeah. blue. Or black, so you can't hardly see. Yeah. So you got to bring in some more light. That's right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. some things get like that. Yeah. You, uh, you just, just because of deception. So what you do is you shine more, a more bright light on. Then you can distinguish the the, the colors there. That's right. Mm -hmm. When you talk about compromising the yeah. truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so now here's an example of the kind of light Satan uses. Let's take anger, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the true light says, be angry, but don't sin. Mm -hmm. And don't let the sun go down on your ring. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Now that all right, now Satan's like comes along, he's going, why were you angry? Maybe if you did this, you wouldn't be angry. Mm -hmm. And here's some steps to follow. Mm -hmm. If you start you getting angry, now I actually heard a man say this the other day. Do, do 10 sit-ups and 10 push-ups. Yeah. Well, this is true. I've heard that. Do 10 sit-ups and 10 push-ups. Yeah. And then if you still are, are, have this anger or he said it was lust to do 10 more yeah. sit-ups and, and 10 more push-ups. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the kind of light Satan sheds. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He tries to illuminate the why. Uh -huh. The true light illuminates mm -hmm. the fact. Mm -hmm. The fact. Of what the thing is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen. Get into shape so you can sin more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's discipline. Another thing the wicked one does is he quotes scripture. Oh, yeah. Amen. And makes a misapplication. Yeah. Yeah. You throw yourself down. 
Yeah. I mean, isn't it written that angels said they have a charge over mm -hmm. you to keep you in the way? I mean, mm -hmm. is it not written? You have to admit, yes, it is written. Mm -hmm. But the application was false. I say that because I've heard people say, what did you think about that sermon? Well, it had a lot of Bible in it. Well, okay, all right. Satan quotes scripture. Yeah. What did he say? What was the application? Because you can't be disarmed by the fact that someone's quoting a lot of scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't fall away because it says that he'll keep you from falling. That's, That's right. right. And he'll never leave yeah. you nor forsake That's you. That's right. Do you believe it or don't you? Yeah. But how are they using it? Yeah. Without light. Tempting God. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's what tempting God is. Uh -huh. Tempting God is stepping into an area where he told you to stay uh -huh. out of it. Mm -hmm. Thinking Amen. he's going to keep you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mickey. Um, something else that Satan does is he shines light on the things that are temporal that you can see. Yeah. That what he's getting, yeah. he's trying to distract right. you with. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, he, um, he hides the things that are eternal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glow sticks. Yeah. They, you know, they're pretty to look at, but they don't really shed much light. That's you know, right. It just, it just illuminates right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't, doesn't benefit anything. Yeah. Just an appearance. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they, the, they make these solar cell things, and they're designed to extract energy from the sun. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the energy is all around us all the time. But unless you have the right means to tap into it and benefit from it, it's yeah. just it's just so much energy just going everywhere. But but this is it, it, it appears as though that this made manifest, and you brought this up that it could also make manifest the things that are right. Well, yeah, so it's not so just a, to say, yeah. well, I just want to find out what's wrong in the world. No, you want to you want to know what's right. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, if you're going to be effective and do it, you're going to have to you have this light this. The true light shining on it, yeah. to where you can you can make the proper distinction, and when you make that distinction, it doesn't go unnoticed. Not not but even the saints especially can they can see. Oh, well, this is good. Yeah. This is good. This has been made brought to light, even though it wasn't you that saw it. Yeah. You yeah. saw him see it, and so it's like it, it, it gets the illumination gets yeah. brighter. Yeah. Illumination yeah. deserved both. Good That's right. And evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. I guess this is a good place to insert this, this third word that uh, is important here is whatsoever. Whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now whatsoever means all, any, anything, everything, whatever. Now it appears that the Holy Spirit's just kind of thrown open the door for interpretation here. Whatsoever makes manifest is light when actually he's doing the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's only one light yeah. that really makes manifest. Yeah. There's really only one light, and that's really what he's saying to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatsoever, he, when you start meditating, you think about, okay, how many things do really make manifest? Let me just make a list. You're going to have a real short list. It's going to narrow down to one. It's got to, be, it's got to come from God. Yeah. That's the only light that really makes manifest. <clears throat> now, go ahead. Apprehended Paul, mm -hmm. the natural sun was at its highest, right? That's right. That known, it was uh -huh. at its highest level. And then the true light, yes. when it shined, mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 See, something began to change. That's right. Mm -hmm. There is just one true light. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So these, there are... Uh, men <clears throat> in the flesh and the world and Babylon have come up with other things that, that they think is light that they present to us as light we, we already discussed some of these things uh, science yeah. this, this is professed by the world to be like the greatest light in our time yeah. is our science whatever it is that you think well, we can, let's see if we can just prove it scientifically. You say Jesus rose from the dead. Scientifically, there's no proof for that. So that, that's just a bunch of baloney, you know, or this, the concept of sin or, or righteousness or, or faith. You see, we can't scientifically prove these things. So these are things that the world rejects. Now there, the, the world's, what, what they call light is evolution. Now that's light to them which is just thoroughly ridiculous and, and about the least scientific thing you can ever find. But that's an example of what the world calls light. Babylon has things that it calls light. 
it's, it's incorporated psychology and these kinds of things and uh, legalism, they, they refer to that as if that is going to illuminate the way of salvation. So there's all these things that uh, men look to for light, but they don't make manifest the true nature of a thing. They're not really that true light that comes from God. <clears throat> Brother Paul. <clears throat> that they refer to as light are ever changing. The, the source changes. Yeah. Um, for instance, recently they discovered that like they uh, said there's nothing faster than the speed of light. Well, just recently they found particles that go faster than the speed of light. Uh -huh. Well, this changes a lot of si their scientific theories. <laughs> yeah. It changes yeah. a lot of things. Their source has to move to a different, to a different location. Mm -hmm. but our source always stays constant. It's always in that same location. We know yeah. where we can go to mm -hmm. get that. Get that light. Yeah, Amen. Right. Amen. You'll find out false teachings are like that too. Yeah. Uh, whenever something's shown, then they'll change how they word everything and yeah. change what their group believes. Yeah. Matter of fact, the one I, I was associated with said the light gets brighter and brighter. So as things change, they change what they believed. It's because more was revealed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can learn a little something from the world here. Mm -hmm. Like for a, lot, for a long time, centuries, they thought the world was flat. Yeah. Yeah. And they found out it wasn't. So they, they just changed, changed yeah. all the books. Yeah. yeah. They just changed everything to be with yeah. that. They didn't say, oh, more what did we think that, yeah. blah, blah, blah. They just adapted to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you kind of can learn that this is the way you respond yeah. to, when you want to, to truth. Mm -hmm. You don't go sit off in a corner and cry because you didn't know it before. You rejoice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you rejoice that you can see it. It has a different... <coughs> it takes all shame out. Once mm -hmm. you see things as they are, it removes the shame and everything associated with being deceived mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this sort of thing. And you, it's a, gr it's a greater light produces a greater reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's Amen. right. Amen. <clears throat> Just think of pe these people, Peter, priest of Pentecost, some of them we're responsible for, for murdering the Lord's Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. When they cried, what shall we do? And he told them, see, they, they gladly, re yeah. gladly, re yeah, well, that was a remarkable mm -hmm. thing because he shined light on that deed that they thought they were doing, yeah. they were fulfilling the law. <laughs> yeah. What they thought, but he shined the light, and all of a yeah. sudden, they're deep. Amen. with gladness, they received it. Mm -hmm. and so, some of the, some of the, um, Places in Japan and other uh, foreign countries are where they they have a lot of people and they live in buildings and there's no windows. I mean, there's huge buildings. They they have figured out a way to pipe through uh, fiber optics the light from the sun into these different rooms, mm -hmm. and they're actually found that they can transfer different parts like like vitamin E and all these different things. They can actually get it for, through this optic cable and. Uh, and so they're, they're learning a lot about this. And, and it, 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 what it ministered to me is that, see, God can, only God can do this. Mm -hmm. He can use Paul to bring you something that's just as bright as if Christ was standing right there. Mm -hmm. Amen. But only God, only God can do this. Yeah, we couldn't yeah. make that happen. Mm -hmm. But see, it's as if though Christ was standing right there telling you face to face, you just listen to Paul, or you listen to one of his messengers, and it does the same kind of thing. It causes the true light to shine. Amen. Because he's really there. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that, mm -hmm. that piece of scientific information was useful to me. Yeah. That um, you know, that man's smart enough to figure these things out. <coughs> that you got to have sunlight. Yeah. See, the sun mm -hmm. is very essential to our our constitution because God put it up there for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. But see, men create all kinds of things that take you away from the the, the things that put you in places yeah. that Amen. you can't get what you need. And so they were finding that people were actually deficient in areas because they didn't have this sunlight. Mm -hmm. And so they, they come up with a way where they didn't have to go. Amen. <laughs> that's not mm -hmm. nice flesh for you. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there is just Sorry. one source of light. I want to uh, recall to your minds uh, our study in Genesis here. We're on, on the first day, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Uh -huh. so he made light on the first day, yeah. but the sun and the stars and the planets were not made until the fourth day. Uh -huh. So the sun is not the source of light. <clears throat> There's light. If, if all the planets were to burn out, which, by the way, they are going to, they're all going to burn up, <clears throat> there's still light. Yeah. 
and, and it's God is the source of light. Now, what we see, this part of what Brother Bob just spoke about and some of the other brethren have, have spoken of, is that God, God gives his light. Mm -hmm. Jesus sends his light. Here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 says, Now you are a light yeah. in the Lord. So this is how it, it, we can reprove the works of darkness in our day and shine the light is because you yourselves are a light. But ultimately, the source of light is God himself. Amen. <clears throat> uh, Brother, Brother Gene and Brother Tony did an excellent job uh, pinpointing this light being in Jesus Christ himself. <clears throat> He's the light of men. Now, Jesus said, The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. So this is, more specifically, this is how we got the light. because is by Jesus sending his Holy Spirit into our hearts. He illumines us. He teaches us all things, what Jesus just said here. This is how we got the light. <clears throat> By the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. <clears throat> this is how we got the light. So now we also, because we are light, we make manifest the darkness around us in this world. <clears throat> Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And Philippians 2.15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So the point here is that, that this is traceable to God. This is not how we naturally are, or were, I should say. This is not how we were by nature. By nature, we were the children of darkness, <clears throat> but we are light in the Lord. <clears throat> what you receive, you own. Mm -hmm. That's what the source of us. He doesn't say, let my light shine mm -hmm. through you. Well, we'll take this next word. It says, "Let like your light," because when you right. receive it, it, you're an owner and you're a steward of it. Amen. It's quite a remarkable thing. Mm -hmm. let, Amen. Your, let your light shine. Amen. Well, we are the. Uh, this light's the only light that can transform <clears throat> us into light. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. That's so, right. Yeah, there's a there's a twofold. There's a, the initial transformation then is the day star. That's right. When it rises in your heart, then that brings you to maturity. So you come in by light, you grow up by light. Mm -hmm. And then to go out by light. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glorious appearing. <laughs> Amen. So whenever, whenever darkness is made manifest or wherever there is light, any place there is true light, you know, this, the Lord's working there in, in some manner, to some extent. Because the, it just, it's just very obvious, brethren have already said it, but you don't get light from darkness. Yeah. The devil doesn't shed light on anything. So if, if light is being shed, you know, this is the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's the only place the light comes from. Whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes? Also, I was thinking like, there's a lot of things can be said about this. You draw a lot of parallels, you know. This light also gives us emits power mm -hmm. uh, enough that it can overtake the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. I was thinking in this respect, you know, today they have uh, <coughs> uh, lights and things <coughs> during the day. It, it, it is powered by the sun and mm -hmm. recharges, you know, so to speak. And then when, when the night comes and overtakes, then that's a move because it's been powered by the light. Mm -hmm. So it, even when it gets surrounded by darkness, it can still be light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hope I said that right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I was, you know, that certain power, and there's a power of darkness, yes, that's right. it's real. That's you know? right. It's mm -hmm. a real power. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, it, it, well, of course it's death, 
Mm-hmm. And, and uh, we was talking about certain people and you know their stages. Well, I, I tell you, this this power of darkness is st- some people have been in it so long and dead so long they stink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are the ones that stay away. From. They glad they put mm-hmm. out that fragrance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now this this power this power of the light you allude to this is insinuated by the phrase that they just sat in darkness have seen a great, mm-hmm. great light. Yes, amen. That insinuates this power. That you're, mm-hmm. It has mm-hmm. the power to dissipate darkness. Mm-hmm. And it, light is even corrective and remedial. And mm-hmm. It's just a lot of qualities that the genuine light has. Mm-hmm. You, get in, you, you notice how you know, have a healing power yeah. to, your, to your spirit. Yeah. You're in the light. There's like recover, you mm-hmm. recover things that you may have lost. Mm-hmm. It, it, so it, that's all power, see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Divine power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I like this, we talked about it last night. I thought about it for a long time. But uh, now, Jesus came, he was the great light. Mm-hmm. In ourselves, we couldn't say that. But now the body <laughs> yeah, right. is, is a great light yeah, when that's right. it's together. Yeah. It, it's that's a, right. been a substitute for that light mm-hmm. uh, that left. We, we're the great light now when yeah. we're together. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't Amen. say you, as in given, are the light of the world. He says, that's where the King James comes in. Now. Ye. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, that's right. Are the light of the world. Yeah, mm-hmm. amen. And this light gives strength. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes yeah. you able to throw down the darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amen. You can see these, even in nature, we see little little examples of this there's sometimes it just it just feels good to get out in the sun just to the sun just feels good on you it kind of revives you and and strengthens you and it that's that's the way the light is for our spirit too <clears throat> very necessary yes amen you know, when adam and eve sinned mm-hmm. they just heard the voice that's right yeah. Yeah, but look what that light did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were, ashamed. they were ashamed. Uh-huh. He, ex- uh-huh. he reproved. He re- he re- his presence. Uh-huh. He hadn't right. said anything yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dad and Maranta, but yeah. he reproved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, even that, like the psychiatrists and things, will tell people that are so depressed, well, get out of that dark room. Don't sit in the yeah. dark place yeah. with all this stuff mm-hmm. around you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Lights, uh, or turn on the lights, open the curtains, and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, they yeah. need the true light, and that's yeah. they won't get it sitting in a dark place. Amen. Yeah, that's right. right. Amen. That's right. It is sad in dark. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mr. Laura? Um, what you were saying that it's, it's like the sunlight, you go out and you feel good, but warm, it's mm-hmm. comforting. Well, it's just like when you don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. When you go to the assembly, mm-hmm. you feel that warmth, that comfort, mm-hmm. that spiritual warmth. And comfort. Mm-hmm. There's more exposure to the light. It takes it, the light. The Lord gives it to us in, in many forms. You could say, it, it all it all comes from Him. Mm-hmm. Amen. <clears throat> Richard Wormbrand. I've talked about this before and how he was kept in solitary confinement in a concrete bunker where the temperature was 56 degrees year-round. No one spoke to him for three years. And they took his clothing. And there was nothing in there. There was, there was not even a bench. There was no pad, nothing. And he said he had, in fact, he said after he got out, he said he missed the place because the Lord <laughs> provided for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They gave him one bowl of soup a day the person who brought it to him pushed it through a hole and never said a word. His body stayed warm. He said his body literally, physically stayed warm on that 56, 57 degree concrete mm-hmm. for three years. Mm-hmm. He said he missed the fellowship that he had with the Lord mm-hmm. after he was taken out of it. Mm-hmm. Because the Lord was with him there and the word of God sustained him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His faith and his hope in things above. Not a hope to get out. He thought he was going to die there. He just mm-hmm. assumed he was going to die there. Mm-hmm. And just put his hope fully in the Lord, mm-hmm. and he came through and came out, mm-hmm. and God protected him. Amen. Amen. Made him a light. Amen. Says, says John was a bright light. Says, he was not. He was not the light. That's right. Yeah. John is careful. He wasn't the light, but he was. He was a bright and shining light. That's right. Yes. 
He, he had to be. Yeah, he prepared. He so well prepared the people yeah. that when the true light sh sh shone, yeah. it, the people were able to be able to work with it. Had he not come, who knows? I mean, they, they, they would not have been made ready. Mm -hmm. I mean, the work that John did was, was, was so important and so preparatory to when Jesus comes on the scene now, now they can, they can follow him and they can benefit from his words. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just going to pin to what Brother, <clears throat> Brother Gene was saying. To think of the world to come now with what Brother Gene has said in mind. The greater comfort came from the light that was given to him by the Lord, even though the light of the sun was withheld. Mm -hmm. And then it says in the world to come, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now John the Baptist, he shined light on Jesus by, yeah. by saying, Behold, uh -huh. right. the Lamb of God. Yep. And that right there, see, that was, you could say, well, he had a lot of function, John the Baptist, but see, that was his primary, yeah. he was raised up to make that primary statement, mm -hmm. Behold, the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. And so he shined the light on him, see, mm -hmm. and, they, and, they, he, and they took it from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there's a sense in which that lesser light of John was needed for us. Mm -hmm. You can't go from the pitch dark into the bright light. Yeah. You can't yeah. take that yeah. beyond your... And so he gave a little more light. The prophets mm -hmm. gave a little more light. Mm -hmm. John gave a little more light. Mm -hmm. And then the true light, which enlightened, came. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prepare the way. Amen. I also wanted to, to bring into the discussion here another thought that occurred to me that uh, concerning... <clears throat> obedience and illumination by way of contrast. <clears throat> now, obedience comes along with illumination. That's, that's one of the reasons that we're illuminated, so you know what to do, because do God does require you to do things. So the illumination is necessary for that, but, but they're not the same thing. The law is for the lawless. It's the wayward one who constantly needs rules and constantly has to be reminded of commandments and thou shalt and thou shalt not. It's the wayward one who needs that. The those that are illuminated have that built in. Yeah. That's that's actually that's part of the new covenant. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor, saying, Hey, come on, come on, know the Lord. Remember? Remember this? Know the Lord. Remember? Gotta no, don't do that. Re, do this over here. Uh -huh. It's not like that. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. <clears throat> Amen. Isn't that experience this day? Perhaps you have to. <coughs> We're being discussed in something said, something completely unrelated to what was said. Pops into my mind of something that I got to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And it was not related. I, I couldn't see any connection with what was said. Yeah. But that's what the light did. Yeah. 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 That's the. That's why if you dumb down the assembly, and you limit who speaks and all this sort of thing, you've eliminated all that factor. But see here, it, 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 as everybody participates, this light like increases several watts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. And it will right. make known things that just just you know about it. Nobody yeah, else will know amen. about it. Just you know yeah. about it. Uh -huh. but Bring something to light, and you'll just you'll just see it as plain as the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'll yeah. know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. That's why, if you try and solve people's problems, you have <clears throat> limited yourself because yeah. now you you're dealing with just what you know. Uh -huh. this, mm -hmm. this is too small yeah. an area for light to operate in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul discusses this in Galatians four. <clears throat> Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, uh, that doesn't mean children of God, that means like children in understanding. We, were, we, were, we had no idea. We were in darkness. That's what he means by children. We didn't know what God was doing. We're in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, 
Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. This is why, see, we're in, we're in training for something greater than just shining light in darkness. That's kind of, that's, that's some training work for us right now. We're in a dark environment, in a dark world, and we shine light, but this is, this is in training for the inheritance. So God, is, God has given us light and made us light. <clears throat> and again, kind of going back to what I started with, this is in, in contrast to a set of commandments that he's given us. He doesn't give us a set of rules, and this is how, this is how you're saved. You, you obey these rules. It's, it's through the illumination and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So you, you know the will of God, and you live in the will of God. <clears throat> Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. <clears throat> and furthermore, Jeremiah tells us, this is the part of the covenant, <clears throat> which I've already referred to. <clears throat> and in 2 Corinthians 3, Paul says, Not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, that light, Amen. that illumination. Amen. And where the spirit of the Lord is, yeah, liberty. there's liberty. That means you can do whatever you want to do. Now some people have a, a hard time with that. You, you can't tell people, church people, you can't tell them that. You can't tell them they can do whatever they want to do. Well, sure you can if you've been born again, if you've being, you're being conformed to the image of Christ. If, if the Spirit dwells in you, you can do whatever you want to do. This is part of that illumination. That you're, we're workers together with God. We're, we have fellowship with the Father and with the Son. This is eternal life. <clears throat> now, I don't want to just end on these things of um, shining light in the darkness. I want to, just for the last few minutes here, consider light in the world to come so our our shining this light which again now this is god's the source of light darkness is not eternal light is eternal so this shining of the light is not limited just to here and now in this world <clears throat> they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever and Jesus himself said, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Amen. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And Revelation chapter 21, <clears throat> now there won't be, now remember God created light before the sun, and he's the source of light. We read a description of the heavenly city Jerusalem, and there's, there's no lights there. There's no sun there. There's no moon there. There's no candles there. This, amen. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the, na and, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory into it. Now that's a whole lot of light. <clears throat> and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. We, don't, uh, we don't have any uh, precise detail about what the Lord has planned for us in the ages to come, but it's, it's going to involve this shining the light that he gave us. Now, we won't be shining light on darkness anymore, but there's more to be seen than what's just in the darkness. This, is, this world is, is the place of darkness. The, in view of the judgment that is up ahead, we, the, the darkness needs to be exposed and light needs to be shed. 
But in the world to come, when the darkness is past, there's not any more darkness. There's going to be more light because there's more to see than what's in the darkness. That's, that's a wonderful thing to consider. Reason for the resurrection, mm -hmm. because a temporal body could never endure mm -hmm. this this great light. So you, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. another reason for the resurrection yeah. of the dead. Yeah. See, yeah. Because we're going to be stepping into the very yeah. presence of the one who is light. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it never, we never, you couldn't endure mm -hmm. it. They couldn't profit you mm -hmm. if you weren't in another body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, it's just the residual effects of Moses being with God frightened the people. Yeah, you can imagine how this light would, you know, it, it is, it, the, those who are lost are not going to want to be there. Yeah. They're going to yeah. flee from you. They're, 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 they're from the face of the land. They don't want anything to do with that. The rich man didn't ask, can I come over there with Lazarus? Yeah. He didn't want to go over there. He wanted some of the benefits yeah. from over there. Yeah. But they were without they him. Brought where he was. Though. That's right. Yeah. And see, actually, the, the day of judgment is going to be the beginning of this light where every everything is going to be made manifest Amen. in the day of judgment. It's a, going to be a, it's a day of great light <clears throat> will be in the judgment. Brother Tony? We have brought up already how comfortable uh, people are who are in darkness when you shine the light on them. Mm -hmm. And in eternity, mm -hmm. these people won't fit. Yeah, yeah, right. Your natures won't fit in the light. They'll be very mm -hmm. uncomfortable mm -hmm. to be in the light. They'll be they'll uh, they'll be they would prefer even though there'll be a place of torment. Scriptures say yeah. they would prefer to be there. Yeah. That's why yeah. he said send yeah. Lazarus over here yes. with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, ultimately, everyone gets what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, when you're in the darkness, the smallest amount of light can be blinding to you, yeah. like a flashlight. Yeah. But you know, in the noonday, if you take that same flashlight and shine yeah. it into your face, mm -hmm. it doesn't have a blinding yeah. effect at all. Yeah. You can really see it. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of what we're doing here mm -hmm. in this world. We're learning to live yes. and walk in the light. Yeah. Yeah. Because when the great light yeah, comes yeah. forth, we want to be able to admire him and his yeah. coming so that his yeah. light isn't a torment to us. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. already yeah. learned to live in the light. Yeah. And so this just complements. Mm -hmm. The light that we've already been living in. Mm -hmm. yeah, the brightness Amen. of His glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good, that's what's going to destroy the enemy. Yeah. You'll be destroyed right. by the brightness yeah. of mm -hmm. His glory. Amen. Amen. We are the planting of the Lord. So, I mean, I was thinking about that light. If you just plant a little tender plant and you just shine light down on it, and just it'll die. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it has to get gradually mm -hmm. strong yeah. and able mm -hmm. to yeah. receive the light in mm -hmm. a more... You know. Robust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Judah? Da darkness is natural, but light is created. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this, and before God calls us into the light that He created, He did create the light, we were in darkness. And 1 Peter 2 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness mm -hmm. into His marvelous light. And this, this too, it even goes back to the beginning. Before there was light, there was darkness. Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4. And the world was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Mm -hmm. So even from the beginning, light has been divided from darkness. They can't have fellowship with each other. Mm -hmm. And only God's light is true light, and only God can give it to you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whatsoever maketh manifest is light. Amen. <laughs> Any other comments, brother? <clears throat> the world to come and how there won't be any darkness there. We won't be seeing light out of darkness anymore. There will, won't be a need to illumine something that had been darkened mm -hmm. before, but there will be the need for more light that you mentioned. And I was considering different things that we can look at in the earth. We can see them well, they're lit properly, but whenever we get them into a greater light, we see things that we didn't see before. Mm -hmm. Details that might have been in, involved with, you know, what was what we were looking at, but, but when we see those smaller things more clearly, 
then the whole is enhanced yeah. more in our mm -hmm. vision and we're able to understand more about the thing and and that's that's some of what's going to take place in the world to come is that the Lord is going to open up things that he illumined here that he's going to open up more of the details and mm -hmm. it's going to enhance the things that we're yeah. looking at here even mm -hmm. to a mm -hmm. greater degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. It reminds me of that different kind of light that Sister Michelle was speaking of. Where mm -hmm. you, need, you need the different kind of light to see some of those smaller details that are there. <clears throat> I recall that um, the gospel is a beacon of light mm -hmm. that the Son of our Creator has brought to us to illuminate the path for eternity. Amen. 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 And it's open by hope. Hope is just a little pinhole. Mm -hmm. In that light. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, brother. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. your comments. Oh, go ahead, brother. Yeah. <clears throat> I had that wear something over my eye after I had that surgery. And there's little tiny holes in there. <clears throat> And I noticed if I look through there, I can see everything just clear as a bell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's what hope is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. What you, you don't see everything, but what you see is really clear. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yep. Put your Amen. Focus. Yes. Yeah, they focus, did an, that's right. <laughs> they did an experiment at a university, and they turned all the lights off and put up, covered all the lights, all the windows. The room was pitch black. But they realized that after a few minutes that it wasn't pitch black. The teacher had left a tiny little pin hole in one of the shades, and what they saw was amazing to them. Yeah. On the wall across from it was all the traffic going by that was happening outside, <laughs> but it took that and it reflected that onto the wall, and the, they were teaching them photography, and but it it was so striking <laughs> that this that the, from the type. But see, that's what Sister Mary said. This is what we have. Our hope. Has illuminated something that's impossible to see with the naked eye. Amen. But it ha does do it. You can see it, yeah. but you just have to get acclimated to it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you see what a great handicap we were under when we couldn't see? Amen. Yeah. Are you survived all that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Was it because you were so strong either? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank you for your sharing, brethren. <clears throat> we'll close in a word of prayer. <clears throat>